ever get that that feeling like, are we living in a sci-fi novel? That's what we're diving into today, buckling up to explore the mind-blowing idea of, get this, a real-life space navy cruiser. Sounds crazy, right? But is it really that far-fetched? Today, we're blurring those lines between science fiction and, you know, actual tech. Got two amazing sources to guide us. One blueprints this futuristic space cruiser. The other dives into how sci-fi has been shaping tech for, like, ever. First up, spaceships. Our source lays out the details of this hypothetical cruiser. Talking a hull may be made of carbon nanotubes or even graphene. It's so strong and light, sounds like it's from the future. Well, it kind of is. And the engines. Hold on to your hats, people. Picture this. A hybrid engine mixing regular tech with, wait for it, nuclear pulse propulsion, maybe even antimatter engines. Antimatter. Yeah, antimatter. Okay, before we get lost in space, let's bring in our expert to break this down. What's the reality check here? Are these actual possibilities or just like pure science fantasy? What gets me is how these crazy concepts, they often come from real science. Take those carbon nanotubes. They're already a big deal in material science, crazy strength to weight ratio. Sure, making a whole spaceship hull out of them is, well, a huge challenge, but the basic science is there. It's like the potential is whispering to us. Hey, that's blowing my mind a little. Yeah. We hear carbon nanotubes, yeah. think future tech, Yeah. but it's already here. We just don't see it. Right, and it's not just materials. Think about directed energy shielding. Sounds like Star Trek, I know. But those advances in high-powered lasers, particle beams getting us closer. The military is already testing laser weapons, you know, for defense against drones. So we're kind of living in a sci-fi world already. Just, you know, less flashy. What about those other wild ideas, though, like the antimatter engines, mm. teleportation? Where do those fall on the science factor fiction scale? Those are definitely um, more on the speculative side, but even those impossible ideas, they come from theoretical physics, and that's the beauty of it all. Science fiction is like that first spark, that what if, yeah. and that gets scientists and engineers thinking, pushing the limits. I love that. So it's not just predicting the future, it's shaping it by daring to imagine, which leads perfectly to our second source. The idea that sci-fi isn't just a mirror, it's a tool shaping the future. What do you think? just lucky guesses or something more. It's like giving reality a push, you know, yeah. saying, hey, try building this crazy thing. Yeah. And sometimes we actually do. Our source has some great examples, like space travel itself, Star Trek, Star Wars. They didn't just give us laser swords and warp speed. They made space exciting. Like we could actually go there. Totally. They got everyone excited about space. And yeah, maybe we don't have space battles yet, uh -huh. but look how far we've come. The International Space Station, Mars rovers, even space tourism, these incredible achievements, yeah, they're amazing engineering, but they started with that spark of imagination. That's what science fiction gives us. It's like those stories, they said, it's okay to dream about space. Mm. And once we started dreaming, well, humans are pretty good at chasing those dreams. And it's more than just like making space travel cool. One of the best things about science fiction, it tackles the consequences of new tech, you know, the ethics, the impact on society before it even becomes real. Oh, for sure. Our source talks about that too. It's fascinating. Sci-fi gives us this safe place to explore, to ask what if mm -hmm. about these huge advancements like artificial intelligence, way before AI was in the news, sci-fi was already asking the big questions, sentient machines, right? Artificial consciousness, what does it even mean to be human? Exactly, Asimov's laws of robotics, or those dilemmas in films like Blade Runner. They're fictional, but they make us think about consciousness, creating life, our place in a world with all this tech. And those conversations are more important than ever now as AI becomes, you know, part of our lives. It's like sci-fi is holding up this mirror, showing us the future, the tech, but also how it changes us. Yes, and by facing those reflections and stories, we're more prepared to make good decisions when those technologies become real. You know, I have to bring up virtual reality here. Even though our sources don't mention it specifically, yeah. it's a perfect example. We've been reading about VR for decades, right? Putting on headsets, entering those digital worlds. And now, mm -hmm. it's not the future anymore, it's here. It really shows how science fiction plants those seeds, right? The idea of virtual reality from books like Ready Player One or movies like The Matrix. It's not just on screen anymore. And the possibilities are incredible. Education, therapy, entertainment, even surgery. It's amazing how those fictional stories they pave the way for real innovation. And they're still shaping what VR can be. It feels like science fiction is giving us a sneak peek into our tech future, even if it's not always spot on. Which brings us back to where we started. That amazing, maybe kind of scary, space Navy cruiser. Let's say science fiction can predict the future. 
or at least influence it. How realistic is it to build something like that in the next, say, 100 years? Well, it depends, right, on how fast things develop and what we decide to focus on. Some things, like those super strong materials, autonomous systems, we're already making good progress there. But other things, like antimatter engines, teleportation, those are still pretty far out there, maybe centuries away, if they're even possible at all. It's this balance between imagination and what we can actually do. So, maybe don't sign up for the Space Navy just yet, though I have to say, those space battles. Mm. Exciting to think about. But it also makes you wonder, taking war to space. Mm, it's a scary thought, yeah. And it brings up something really important, something we forget a lot in our rush to make new tech, the ethics of it all. Even if we can build a warship like that, should we? What happens when we militarize space? These aren't just sci-fi questions. They're real ethical dilemmas we need to face as we explore the universe. Yeah, it really makes you think, huh, we're so busy asking, can we, that we forget to ask, should we? And that's where sci-fi, I think, really shines. It forces us to face those ethical questions. Yeah. Before they become, you know, real problems. It's like using fiction to test our values, our choices. That's what makes science fiction more than just story. Right. It's a mirror, but it's also a lens. Helps us see ourselves, our motivations. Exactly. So here we are on this imaginary spaceship. So much potential, but also some risks. What's the takeaway? We've got tech that's almost here and tech that's like way out there. Where do we even start? It's about finding that balance. I mean, those big, exciting advancements, the antimatter drives, teleportation, they're tempting, but maybe the most important breakthroughs. They'll be in things that make us more human. Sustainable living, you know? Sharing resources fairly, finding peaceful solutions. Those are the real challenges, whether we're in space or here on Earth. It's like they say, if you build it, they will come. But maybe it's more like, if we build it, are we ready? Are we building a future that's, well, good, not just advanced, but actually reflects the best of us? That's it, exactly. Science fiction isn't about the gadgets, not really. It's about us, how we use those gadgets, how they change how we see ourselves, the universe, the future we decide to create. Which brings us to you, dear listener. If you were given the plans for this cruiser, this amazing, kind of scary cruiser, what would you focus on? What's the one tech challenge you'd solve first? Would it be those super strong materials? Pushing the limits of what we can even build? Or maybe creating the most advanced AI, something that can handle space travel, but also help us find peaceful solutions? Or would you focus on something else entirely, like making sure we can actually live in space, creating a ship that's not just a weapon, but a home, a sign that we can thrive, even out there in the void? It's something to think about, right? because we're all kind of designing the future with the choices we make, the technologies we support, even the stories we tell. So as we wrap up this deep dive, remember, the future isn't just for characters in books or scientists in labs, it's for all of us. Keep asking those what ifs, keep dreaming big, but keep thinking about the consequences too. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, keep looking up, keep questioning, and keep that imagination burning bright 